Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, and as me move off, my conflicts, everything just turn over and I'm in my van from my seat. And I say, enemy, you're not nice spoiled my worship here. Amen? And so I know that somehow there, you know, something might happen to each one of us this morning to, to kind of damp the spirit. But in the name of Jesus, we're going to press. Amen? And we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to lift Jesus higher from this earth to eternity. Amen? We pray, oh, sovereign Lord, that as we as we come before you in worship, that you'll, you'll put the songs in our spirit that you want to hear. Amen. May this worship be to your glory and to your honor and to your praise. Father, may you be pleased and may your people be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift Jesus higher, a little higher. From the earth to eternity, it's safe. I be lifted up from this earth. I will draw all men unto me. Lift Jesus higher, a little higher. From the earth to eternity. If I be lifted up from this earth, I will draw all men unto me. Oh, lift Jesus higher, go oh, a little higher from the earth to eternity. Let's lift Jesus, lift Jesus higher, a little higher, from this earth to eternity, he said if I be lifted up from this earth, I will
people don't want. You're still excellent. You're excellent, Jesus. You're excellent, Jesus. You're excellent. You're excellent in all the earth. You're excellent, Jesus. You're excellent. You're excellent in all. If the rich man, if the rich man don't want to praise you, you're excellent. You're excellent, Jesus. You're excellent. Oh, yes, you're excellent in all the earth. Excellent, Jesus. You're excellent. You're excellent in all the earth. Write my name. Write my name. Write my name on paper. Write my name on paper. Write my name Touch my finger, say you touch my finger on the golden pen, the golden pen, the golden pen. Touch my, touch my finger on the golden pen. Write my name on pen. Write my name. Write my name on pen. Write my name. Write my name. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. I know he delivers me. Yes, he is. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. I know he delivers me. How do you know? How do you know he delivers? How do you know? Jesus is say Jesus is my deliverer Jesus is Jesus is my deliverer Jesus is my deliverer I know he delivers me Hallelujah The testimony is personal I know I know I know he delivers me hallelujah so i just want to be where you are dwelling daily in your praise hallelujah come on say i don't want to worship from above draw me near draw me near the pride of our hearts. I just, I just want to be where you are. In your dwelling place. In your dwelling place forever. Come on, say, take me, Lord. Take me to the place where you are. I just want to be. I just want to be with 
Cry up our heart today, dwelling day. in your prayer. I don't want to worship. Draw me near, oh Lord. Draw me near to where you are. I want to be where, I want to be where you are. The table. The table. Surrounded by your glory. Surrounded by your glory. Oh, in your presence. Oh, Father, that's where I always want to be. Oh, Lord, I just want to be with you. I just want. Desire of my heart is to be with you. I just want to be with you. So draw me near. So draw me near. Nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the 
are still being
just keep it right there. We need a move. Cause we need a move. We need a move in this place, God. Cause we need a move. Oh, we need your spirit to move. Cause we need a move. We're desperate for you. We're desperate for you. Church, 
Can we shout the greatest name on all the earth? Can we shout the sweetest name? Can we shout the sweetest name? The name that's above all names. Can we bless the name of Jesus? It's not Bahula, it's not Buddha, it's not all the other names that we hear about. What is the name of Jesus? Amen. Can we bless the name of Jesus, church? Can we bless the name of Jesus? Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. It's at the name of Jesus, demons tremble. It's at the name of Jesus, miracles are wrought. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we bless the name of Jesus, Praise church? The, the anger of the soul. Praise the name Praise of Jesus. Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus. Worthy, worthy, Jesus. worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Praise bless God. the name of Jesus. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise it's indeed a joyous opportunity, feeling, and a wonderful opportunity to be here in the house of God, to lift up the name of Jesus, Amen. to magnify the name of Jesus, and to declare that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Praise God, church. Praise, Praise God. God, church. Praise, Praise God. God, church. Are you ready for worship, church? Praise, God. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, Could you turn to hymn number 117 from the worshiping songbook? Because as we declare that Jesus is all that we need, and Jesus is the anchor for the soul. So we're declaring, with your anchor hold in the storms of life. When the clouds unfold their wings of strife. When the strong tides lift and the cables strain. Will your anchor drift or firm remain? Praise and worship. Praise God. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife. When the strong tides lift and the cable strain, will your anchor drift or fur Could we do the first verse again? Will your anchor, anchor, anchor hold in the storms of life? When the storms unfold their wings of strength, when the strong Hallelujah! 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 Bless 
the name of Jesus. Sister Julian Williams, could you come and pray for God's blessing on our divine worship today? Yes, Julian, could you come, please? Thank you. in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege, oh glory to your name, Jesus. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Father, I want to praise you for this invitation to be able to carry everything, oh glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the invitation that you have given to us to carry everything everything to God in prayer. Father, we glorify your great name. We lift you up. We honor you, almighty Amen. God, for you are Praise still God. the king of kings. Oh, glory to your name of Jesus. In spite of what is happening in this world, chaos all around, yes. for you are still king of kings. Amen. We praise you, almighty Praise God, God, for you are still Lord of lords. Yes. You are still the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. You still sit on the circle of the earth. Jesus, you still have the final say. You are still in control. Jesus, yes. you still reign. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. Jesus, you are still Lord. Yes, Lord, in spite of what's happening. Yeah, Lord, in spite of the noise and the confusion, yes. you are still Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, and you are coming back for happy peers of the people. Yes. Father, we humbly bow before you and we confess that we are sinners. Yes, Lord, we have messed up and we have gone astray. But we thank you, Jesus, for one more chance to come into your house mm. and to cry, Abba, Father. Yes. We praise you, almighty God, for we are no bastard. We are no outcast. We can come and we can cry and say, Father, forgive us. Jesus, and you are yes. ready to forgive. Jesus, Amen. you are ready to wash. You are ready to cleanse. You are ready to pick us up. So we say, Father, have mercy upon us, for yes. we have sin. Amen. Yeah, Lord, we have wandered and we have three. Yeah, Lord, but we come to the fountain yes. to be washed one more time. Mm. Yeah, Lord, and we pray, Almighty God, that you will cover us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Jesus, and we be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Yes, Jesus, ready to be a fruit. Father, we exalt you for you are king. Father, we pray, Father, that you will take full control of this service. Yes. For you are God. And we are your people. And we come sit at your feet, ready mm. to feast. Yes, Jesus, ready to feast. Yes, Lord, we come ready to feast. Re yes, Lord, we come to Yes, Jesus. Yes, yeah, Lord, we need a word from you, yes. Jesus. If we don't hear from you, Jesus, what will we do? What will we do, Jesus? So we come up. from you. I pray almighty God that you take everything in control. You will take the moderator because it belongs to you. Jesus, I pray that you will fill his mouth with words. Yes, Jesus, I pray that you will cover him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. I pray you will take your man servant. Jesus, you knew him before he was formed in his mother's womb. Yes, his lips belong to you. Yes, Lord, I pray that you will anoint him afresh. Jesus, you will do for him exceedingly, abundantly more than I'm able to ask or could ever think. Jesus, set the musician, clear mighty God, for this is your church. Yes, Lord, set the singers. Yes, Lord, I pray that they will sing to the honor of your glory. Yes, Lord, take full control. Reign, Jesus, reign, yes, yes. for this is your house. Yeah, Lord, remember those that are watching. Father, I pray you minister to their heart. Yes. yes, and they'll be reminded that there is still a God in Zion. And that you will love them with an everlasting love. Yes. And you want to do something for them. Yes. You want to tear down mountains today. 
you want to come in, Father, and to have your own way. Yes. Father, we surrender everything to you. Yes. And we say, Thank have, you. yes, Jesus, Thank have you. thine own sweet way. Yes. yes, Lord, you are God. And oh, you want to come in and sup with us. Yes. Mighty God, help us to release almighty God and to allow you to come in and to have your own sweet way. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Good. Thank you, Sister Julian, for making such a strong prayer for us. And we believe that God answers prayer. And we look to him by faith, expecting a show of blessing today. Praise God, church. Praise God. Of course, I'm Deacon Walker, your moderator for this today. And as usual, we are coming from the Church of God Seventh Day here in Spanish Town, um, Jamaica. Warm weather. Love the sunshine. You know, nice, nice place. You know, and of course, we just want to give our thanks for the fact that we're here another time. And we are bigger in number today <laughs> because it's not only 50 anymore. And we have a big enough um, space here. We can hold a lot of persons. Thanks be to God. So, of course, we are bigger in number and we thank God for that. But you in cyberspace, YouTube and Facebook, in the main, remain focused. Continue to worship with us. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Of course, we have today some special people. And first on my list is, of course, our host pastor, Pastor Henry Harley and Sister Angelisa. They are here today. Praise God, brethren. Praise God, praise God. And we have some first-time visitors. First-time visitors, you know, you're very special. So I want to sing you out. We have today, first-time visitors, as I said before, Miss Simona Garnett. See her there, put your hands together for her. And Mr. Alfonso Robinson. Praise the Lord for them. Of course, their sister Garnet's daughter and son-in-law. Praise God for them, church. Praise God for them, church. Praise God. Come on, man. Let me feel some love, man. Yes, man. We are so happy to have you today. Of course, we have repeat visitors. I don't know if it's Brother Bedassi. And I'm sure. Oh, yes, it's Brother. You see, under the mass, it's Brother Bedassi is here today. And of course, as I said before, we have repeat visitors. But we have some people who listen a long time. Long, long time to see them. Well, in fact, when she, I saw them, I recognize her mask and all. And, uh, you know, I speak none other than Sister VJ Williams. Praise God. I've seen her such a long time. Praise God, brethren. Praise God, brethren. And we have Sister McLean, who has not been with us for some time, too. You know, it's, it's just, it's just, it just gives a wonderful brethren. It just gives a wonderful feeling. I don't know if you're feeling what I'm feeling. But just, I wasn't here. I could be here last week and I was like, can't be here. But thanks be to God. I'm here today. And I'm here today to worship God, brethren. I'm here today to lift up the name of Jesus in the place today. We know if you pour some pressure upon the devil, man, you may like it. You understand what I'm saying here? So we come into the house of God. Let us un just level, just, leave, just drop off everything else, man, and worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Them say the Delta virus strain might come here. But listen here. We're going to cover ourselves in the name of Jesus. Because we know that in the name of Jesus, we can conquer every foe. Isn't it so, brethren? Even so, brethren. So forget about outside the man. And let us truly lift up the name of Jesus today. Praise the Lord, brethren. Praise the Lord, church of God. Praise the name of Jesus. At this time, we'll be calling on Sister Jamelia Walker. We'll be coming to do the scripture reading for us. And scripture reading comes to us from 2 Peter 2, verse 1 through to verse 4. That's 2 Peter 2, <coughs> from, verse one, from verse 1 through to verse 4. Praise the Lord. Our scripture, take, scripture reading is taken from 2 Peter 2, verse 1 to 4. I begin. But there were false prophets mm. also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, 
whom privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And though, I'm sorry, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Here, here ended the reading of God's holy word. Okay, um, quick, remain standing, church. We'll have another passage read. Second Peter 1, verse 1 to 4. We'll read Second Peter 1, verse 1 to 4 as well. Thank you. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. Thank you very much, Sister Jamilo. Of course, we recognize the efficacy in the word of God, and we just wait now, you know, because we know that something is in store. Isn't it so, Bridget? Yes, yes, yes. We feel, we feel sense that something is in store out of the word of God. Okay, without further delay, I'll be calling on Brother Chan Ru to come and do the offertory for us, and Ebenezer Heritage will be prepared to sing for the collection of the tithe and offering. Brother Chan Ru. Praise the Lord. Virgin and friends, this is the section of our worship where we honor God by giving back some of what he has blessed us with and give him more than we can. We must give him sacrificially. Give him till it hurts because he's worthy. I'd just like to read from Deuteronomy verse 17, verse 1. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness, for what is that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So, brethren, when we come to give to the Lord, we must give him the best, because he's deserving of the best. So we give him with time, we give him the best of our time. We give him prayers, we give him the best prayers. And if we're going to give him money, give him till it hurts. And that will show how much we love and, uh, um, and respect him for all that he has done for us. Could you just bow your heads while I pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we tell you thanks for your amazing grace and your mercies and your loving kindness towards us. Lord, we tell you thanks for another day to be in your house, another day to praise you, another day to serve you, another day to give to the furtherance of the gospel. Help us, Lord, to understand that giving is a show we love and showing how much we appreciate what you do for us. So help us to give cheerfully, give abundantly, give knowing that you are worthy and just give knowing that you can give us far more. So Lord, we just tell you thanks for another day and thanks for the opportunity 
And we pray for those who are going to use it, Lord. Help them to use it for your honor, use it for your glory. And we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. The Ebenezer Heritage will be singing while the offering is being collected. I can smile 
Amen. That's the name of the Lord. He loves to hear the wind sing as it whistles through the pines on mountain peaks. And he loves to hear the raindrops as they splash to the ground in a magic melody. And he smiles sweet approvals as the waves crash to the rocks in their harmony. Majestic symphony. Hallelujah, stop already. The song of the redeemed church. 
What a wonderful rendition. Can we bless the name of Jesus? Put your hands together once more for Ebenezer Heritage. Praise God. What a song the redeemed will sing on that glorious and triumphant day when Jesus shall return to this earth. Of course, they gave us earlier. I know the peace speaker. I know him by name. Who is the, spe the peace speaker of church? Who is the peace speaker? Jesus, praise God. Thank you, Ebenezer Heritage, for doing those two lovely renditions for us. And we pray that you'll continue to sing to the glory of God. Thank you too, Brother Chan Ru, for doing the offertory so well for us. Praise God, brethren. Praise God, brethren. Praise God, brethren. Praise God. Of course, you know, we're anticipating the word, you know, to, come, to be coming shortly. But let us pause a bit because we have, you know, two people here today that have decided to follow Jesus. Did you hear it? We have two people today in here who have made it known that they have decided to follow Jesus. So we're calling on the Williams father and daughter to come, come here. You can just come as we will just listen to what you have to say about Jesus. And of course, I agree with you. He set me free one day. He set me free. He broke the bars of prison for me someday in glory's face i shall see glory be to god he set me free sun dancing church he set me free one day he set me free Praise the Lord Church. 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 Blessed be the name of Greeting Jesus. Blessed be the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus Christ Praise of Nazareth. God. You know, for, for years I, you know, I've realized that something was missing from the life. You know, that missing peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding. And that thing, you know, after you start to think, you know, in the process of life and what is happening today one would recognize that that missing peace is jesus christ you know that that soulfulness that joy the only peace and today i have decided to commit my life to the, the most high the one who brought me through so many things you know and i'm here to stand tall to say i know that this you know this name is the real name and my reason for choosing this church is it's based on the doctrinal belief it seems like you know it is in line with the word of god what the bible teaches and you know those are some of the basis why I, I, I decide to take this step today. And I want you guys to continue to pray me and my daughter up as she decided to make this step, you know. I think this is an awesome step for the family, you know. And I, I, I would, you know, ask everyone who, you know, know that, you know, the journey will not be so easy to pray up me and my daughter and my family. All right. What is this? All right, the reason why I want to 
to baptize is because I know that God is the only Savior and He is the only way. Friends, can we just bless the Lord for them, Virgin? Can we just bless the Lord for them, Virgin? Praise the name of Jesus. It's so wonderful that family can worship together. When the family knows Jesus. Praise God. May God bless the home. Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, our, our, our brother and sister. And may the Lord give you strength as we, of course, go through the baptismal process. And that you live. Live for him. Live to declare his lordship over your life. Praise God, brethren. Praise God, brethren. Are you happy to be in the house of God today? Is it a wonderful privilege? Praise God. Yes, man, I'm feeling good up here. Praise God. I hope you too are feeling well in cyberspace because there's an anticipation in the place right now because we know that the Lord has a word for us. Do you believe that, church? Do you believe that, church? Could you stand everywhere? Could you stand? Could you stand? Could you stand? Put your hands together and make welcome. Our daddy, our teacher, our pastor. Host Pastor, Pastor Henry Harley, in Jesus' name, amen. Shall we bless the name of the Lord? Shall we just raise our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's a lot to be thankful for, people. There's a lot to be thankful for, church. And I give God glory and praise and honor for the privilege and, and a kind of relief, a little relief, not all of it yet, amen, that we can be kind of gathered in the house of the Lord on this Sabbath day and can offer to him worship and praise because he's worthy of it. Amen? Amen? And so I want to join in extending greetings to all who are actually in the building and especially our visitors. We want to give God thanks for you. We're glad to see you and to know that you have a mind to be in the house of the Lord. After all, it is the best thing that created man can do. That is, acknowledge the creator. Know that there's a creator and acknowledge him. Amen? Amen? And not just acknowledge him by a kind of mental thing, but doing something practical. And one of the practical things we do is that we make effort to be in the house of the Lord and worship him. Amen? Amen. want to give God thanks for those who are joining us online by means of Facebook, YouTube. We give God thanks for you as well. And trust that as we worship together, you may feel the presence of the Lord. Amen? And worship is not going to be meaningful unless you feel the presence of the Lord. Amen? It is going to be ritualistic. It is going to be a routine unless you feel the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And the way to feel the presence of the Lord is to worship sincerely. Amen? Amen? And if you're going to worship sincerely, your mind has to be off your problems. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Your mind has to be off the pressures. Your mind has to be off the concerns of life. And acknowledge the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Is God good? <laughs> Amen. God is really good. Amen. Because we're alive. And I don't know about you, you know. But I am reaching a stage where I'm saying, each time my eye open, <laughs> amen, <laughs> when my eyes open, I say, thank you, yeah. hallelujah, <laughs> still on the land of the living, yeah, not doing as well as I perhaps want to, but I'm still alive, <laughs> oh, praise the name of the Lord, I am still breathing, yeah. yes, and old time people would say, once there is life, Praise God. And the hope we have is a hope in King Jesus. Amen. It's not a hope and an expectation we have in people. Because people fail. And people disappoint. 
Amen. And the arms of flesh, the Bible says, will, will fail you. And you know what they say? The arms of flesh will fail you. What? Not even yourself. Amen. You ever thought about that? Amen. I mean, that you can't even trust yourself. <laughs> Amen. Certain things back you up. And when you, you say some things and do some things, you can't believe, say, are you? Amen. 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 So, you know, our trust and confidence has to, got to be in God and in the grace of God and not in what we can do and what we know and how strong we are and how wonderful we are. We have to just rely on God's grace. Amen. So it's good to be in the house of the Lord and I, I, feel, I feel some release. Amen. I don't feel all of it yet. Amen. But I'm glad for how it feels. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to share with you today from the Word of God, and the scripture reading is actually 2 Peter 1, 1 to 4. And there's a thought I want you to register in your mind, in your heart, everything. The topic for today is in Jesus Christ, we have everything we need to live godly amen, amen. amen. what's the topic in jesus, in jesus christ we have everything we need to live godly amen let us pray father in heaven we thank you for today we thank you for our spared lives we're glad that we can come into your house for worship you have kept us through the night opened our eyes because if you didn't provide the means and facilitate the opening, we wouldn't be able to open it. And we're alive and we thank you. More so, we're thankful we can be in your house for worship. And oh God, you know us. You know everything about us. And those that have joined us online, we pray, holy God, that you will also bless them with the nearness of your presence. And so today, we're asking that you will bless your word to our hearts. So that at the end, we will know that in Jesus Christ, we have everything we need to live godly. We ask his mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. amen. <laughs> Praise God. You know, we have been studying about the apostle Peter during this quarter. Amen. And... Uh, in our Sabbath school and throughout the lessons, we have seen many ways in which we are like Peter. Amen. And Peter has been like us. Not true. <laughs> Amen. Yes, impulsive and sometimes confrontational and uh, sometimes rash. And straightforward, and if we don't know things, we want no, and we all kind of things. Amen. We have seen in many ways uh, how we are like Peter, but we also notice in the final stages of Peter's journey how he matured. Amen. Yes, that Peter didn't end up the way he started out and that's an important lesson for us as believers amen the process of growth and development the process of change the process of improving getting better and we notice that peter grew and got better he became less impulsive and confrontational he grew because he was following Jesus Christ and what Jesus taught and so here we have it Peter not only growing and learning but being willing to pass on instructions amen and so we're reading from one of the letters he wrote we're reading from one of his epistles and what a lesson it is. The lesson fundamentally that I want to remind you that Peter has brought is that we have everything 
We need to live godly in this present world. Now, it says here in verse 1, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle to them that have obtained like precious faith. He is writing to people who share the faith that he has in God. Amen? And so, in a way, all of us who share this faith can say that this letter is written to us. Amen? And it is like precious faith that we have received through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So Peter's Savior is our Savior too. Praise the name of the Lord. And all of the good qualities we can find about Jesus Christ, who Peter declared to be his Lord, we can find it in him ourselves. Amen? Verse 2. Grace and mercy, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. According to his divine power, praise God, according to his divine power has what? Given us all things that pertain unto life and I want to make sure we understand what is going on here because this is critical. Peter is saying that we have been given all things by divine power. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The source of what we have been given is divine. Amen? There is no other source like this. Other sources that provide things are not necessarily divine. Amen? And what it means is that there is no hidden agenda. There is no negative intention behind what we have been given. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. There is no limitation on what we have been given. It is given by divine power. Some people have a problem with what some people get. <laughs> Amen? Some people look at what other people have. They don't necessarily know where they get it from, how they get it, and they have a problem. Amen? Some things some people feel are too good for some people. <laughs> some people feel that some people don't deserve certain things. Some people sometimes wonder how people have certain things. Where they get it from. How come they have it? I am saying to you, by the word of Almighty God, that divine power has given unto the believer all that is necessary. Praise the name of the Lord. All that is necessary for life and godliness. Amen? There are some persons who don't believe that as they are now with faith in Christ that they have everything that they need to live godly. There are some persons that are still searching even though they have Jesus Christ 
as their Lord and Savior, they are still searching. What are you searching for? What are you looking for? What more do you want? What do you expect over and above what Jesus Christ has done? What is it that you are discontented, dissatisfied with? Why you are not living contentedly in Jesus? What is it? What is it? Divine power has given you and given me everything. Amen? How did you get it? Through the knowledge of him that called you. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen? You are given the thing. Come on, our church. Are you with me? You have been given it. It is something that you have been given it is not something that you have to work for and strive for and pay for it is something that you have been given praise the name of the lord if you have been given the thing and you have received it you have it amen are you with me? Yeah, you have it because it has been given. If you don't have it, it's because you have not what? Received it. You have not taken it. But you have been given the thing and nobody can stop you from getting it except yourself. Amen. Come on, our church. Are you with me? Because it is given by divine power. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Divine power has made it available. So even if somebody bad mind and grudgeful and envious, them can't take it away from you. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Come on, wake up, church. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Understand what's going on here. God, through Christ, has given you all things that pertain to godly living. Every, you have it. You have it. You have it. Amen? You have it. You have it. You have it. How? Because you have been given it by divine power. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You have been given it by divine power. No, no, you know, <laughs> um, a little illustration just pop in my head. And, and it's like this. You know, somebody could give you a million dollars, right? And a million dollars would mean nothing to you. Except your what? Except number one, you take it. Amen? Amen? Am I right? Yeah, yeah them give you. Them say, here. And you look upon them and say, hmm? <laughs> really? You serious? Are you really serious? It's a million dollars, you know. And, and you're, you're, you're told, here. It will mean nothing until you have taken it. But I want to go a little further. That even after you have taken it, it will mean nothing until what? You start spending it. <laughs> Amen? Amen? It won't mean uh, you can take it and wrap it up tight. Amen? And store it in a safe. And every day you can go about and say, 
I have a million dollars. And you never spend it. How meaningful is it? It don't mean nothing. It won't mean anything until you start to spend it. Amen? Now, that is a kind of psychology that we need to kind of re register in people because they figure that the way to um, kind of make sure you have the money is to keep it and hoard it or hide it. The way to make use of the money is what? You have to spend it. Now, if you don't want to release things, then you're going to have a problem. Amen? And there are some of us who, 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 who don't want to release. And that's why the Bible says better to what? Release. Amen? That, that it's better to do that. Because when you do that, it tends to come back. Right? And, and so we have this little song we used to sing. Love is something if you... What happens? Yeah. But if you keep it in your pocket, like a magic penny, what happened? You, just, you, you, don't have, you don't have any. Right? So you have to give it away. So the point I am making is that the divine power has made available everything that pertains to life and godliness. And yes, it is good that we know that it is more important that we take it and then even far greater importance is that we begin now to apply it. Amen? All right. Here's another little thing. You have life because every morning you wake up. But all you do is wake up and lie down in the bed. How useful is your life? How useful is your life? If every day you are awake and you say, yes, I'm awake. But all you do is what? You lie down in bed. How meaningful is that life? It's not very meaningful. Am I right? It is almost as though you don't have any. Because life is not just to wake up and lie down. Life is something that you have to engage in. You have to live. Am I right? Amen? For life to be meaningful, you have to be doing something with it. Amen? Your life cannot have meaning if you're not doing anything with it. And to that extent, God has given us by his divine power all that pertains to life and godliness. We've got to do something with it. Amen? 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 If we don't do anything with it, it is just as though we did not get it. Are you with me? You with me? Amen? So, we want to continue by noting here, the Bible says, it is through the knowledge of him that has called us. Called us. Not that we have showed up and demanded or that we qualify for and receive it but that we were called it is the generosity of God are you with me God called you can you praise him for that praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord, the Lord. God called you not pastor called you, not husband or wife called you, but what? God called you. And having called you, he didn't just call your name for nothing. He called you in order to confer on you divine through divine power 
all that you need to live godly. Amen? Isn't that a wonderful thing? Isn't that a wonderful thing? That God call you and not only call you and say, I know you, I know you exist. He says, I am giving you everything. All things that you need for life and godliness, I am giving you in this call. Are you happy for it? Are you appreciative of it? Are you thankful for it? Are you aware that what God has done is that God has set you right? Hallelujah. He has set you up in a very special way. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. All right, let me show you something else as we go to the next verse. Praise God. Praise God. What it says. A, a, yeah, whereby are given what? Whereby are given unto us what? Exceeding great precious praise God. Not regular kind of promise though. You understand what's going on? That you have been called and been given all that pertains to godliness and in what you have been given are some promises. No, not just promises. You have been given what? Exceeding great. Hallelujah. No, no, if the promise is a good promise, it just need to be of something solid for you to get it. But here, a great promise is an exceptional one. But more than just great, it is exceeding great. That means it greater than great. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. That we have been given. God has been good. We are special people because God has given us all that pertains to life and godliness and has given us great and precious glory to his name glory to his name glory to his name exceeding great and precious have you received any great promise from God have you received any exceeding great promise from God <laughs> uh, let me just share two with you. Second Corinthians 6 verses 17 and 18. Just to give you a little touch because there is so much in this business. Second Corinthians 6 17 and 18. Wherefore come out from among them and be separate. Amen? That sounds like you're being called. Am I right? Yeah. Called. Come out from among them. Amen? Amen. I have something special for you. Come here. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's calling. Come here and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you verse 18 and will be hallelujah a father unto you and what you shall be my sons and what says who hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the Lord the promise is that having come out of where you were and having come into what he has called you, he says, I am promising you that the almighty God who I am, the I am will be your father. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. You don't seem excited to have God as your father. Eh? 
he says i'm promising you this that i will be your father who is your father and this is not a prick prick play play father business you know or praising him of the lord and not an earthly father or something where sometimes you can't find them and you don't know where they are and sometimes they're not even own you amen amen them don't want to own you and don't have nothing to do with your life but god says i will be your father i will take care of you oh praise the name of the lord i will take care of you as a father and i am the greatest father there is oh praise the name of the lord and if i am your father you never want nothing which of you being a father will give a child serpent when they ask for food, bread, you give them a stone. Which, which of you would do it? God says, I am making you a promise that you come out of her, you come out from among them, you respond to my call, I will be your daddy. Hey. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's my daddy always sing. I will not suffer. <laughs> will not beg for bread he's my daddy hallelujah daddy God <laughs> hallelujah when father and mother forsake me hallelujah God will take me up he's my daddy glory to his name glory to his name and so he's saying that's a precious promise it's a great promise. Because not only is he saying, I will be a friend to you, that I will walk with you, and talk with you, and so on, and, and, and if you need me, you can call. He says, I will be your father. And, you know, I was struck by this when I read it. That in many ways, when we read scriptures, we find a term... That is a collective term for both genders. So that when the Bible says, Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. It's a collective reference to both genders. Are you with me? Amen. Yeah? Now are we the sons of God. Believe, beloved, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. It's a collective expression for all believers of whatever gender. You with me? Amen. Male and female. But in this case, I was struck by it that a distinction was made so that you can't make any mistake about this. That, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That daughters of a father and sons of a father, all you need to do is to respond to the call, come out of her. Be separate. Hallelujah. Touch not. The unclean thing. I will receive you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. That is just one case. Let me give you another quick case of a promise that I think is great. John 14 verse 3. Amen. Amen. John 14 verse 3. What does it say? Hallelujah. I go. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't be worried. Don't be scared. Don't be frightened. Don't be disappointed. Don't give up. He said it to his disciples. It's necessary for me to go, but I can promise you. Hallelujah. One thing, if I go, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself. Hallelujah. So that what? Where I am. Glory to God. Glory to God. There 
you will be also so the idea here is that there is a promise that jesus made that he is going to come back yes all the things we read and learn about jesus and we sometimes in our own heart wish that we were there and could hear him teach and to see him raising the dead and to see him transfigured on the mount we sometimes said we wish we were there when he was teaching on the mountain side blessed are ye when men shall revile you blessed are the merciful they shall obtain mercy blessed are the peacemakers they shall be called the children of god blessed are the meek they shall i mean we wish we were there jesus says i'm promising you this i'm coming back again and this time I won't leave you. Glory to his name. Where I am. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where I am, you will be great promise. Not true. Exceeding great and precious promise. Amen. So let's go back to that verse in uh, 2 Peter 1 verse 4 because I think that's where we're going to have to close. Amen? So it says, no verse 4 we're at now. Whereby are given unto us what? Exceeding great and precious promise. And I just shared two with you. One, that God will be your daddy. And two, that Jesus is coming back and he's going to receive the believers unto himself that where he is they will be there also amen? amen but perhaps even greater than those promises is this other promise that is wrapped up in this here that by these great and exceeding precious promises you might be partakers Hallelujah. Amen. Of what? Do you know what that is? You know what that is? Do you know what it means to be a partaker of divine nature? Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Let me tell you something. You see, when you hear about that which is divine, it is that which cannot be destroyed that which cannot die that which goes on forever and ever God himself is divine and what he has promised hallelujah that he is giving us all things that pertain to life and godliness here so that we may be able to persevere and in the end partake oh partake of divine nature praise the name of i'm in line for divine nature praise the name of the lord i'm in line for divine nature i'm in line for a nature that allows me to live forever oh praise the name of the lord human nature is what we enjoy no amen and human nature is subject to death Human nature is subject to deterioration, is subject to decay. No matter what human you are, as time goes on, you get old. Amen? And if you are around long enough, you get old and withered and shriveled. <laughs> You don't like to hear that. 
the human nature that we have, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a divine place. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So no matter how young, strong, beautiful, pretty, healthy you are, that cannot make it into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. But you don't have to worry because the Bible says his divine power has given us all that we need to live godly and righteously and we have the promises to keep us going Amen. glory to God yeah. praise the name of the Lord so that as we continue we will end up partaking of divine nature I'm excited about that because let me tell you something when I consider the life and existence and so on I say to myself eternal life must be the greatest goal that any human being can have. Amen? To live forever. There cannot be any greater ambition. Amen? And some people sometimes as Christians, we make the devil fool us. Right? Like you don't have no ambition if you turn Christian. The greatest ambition possible to any human is that ambition to live forever in eternity. Amen. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. That, that's the greatest ambition any mortal person can have. Any person. You have, you have ambition to be doctor, lawyer, famous, have money, whatever celebrity that dies. That's a part of human nature that deteriorates, it corrodes, it is corrupted. It dies. Amen? But we are being made to understand from Peter, our friend, amen, that we have been given all that potential, life and godliness, and that we have been given exceeding great and precious promises, so that by these promises, we may become partakers. When you're partaking of something, it means that you are involved in and enjoying what is going on. And according to the scriptures, we are lining up to enjoy divine nature. Divine nature is the essence of God himself. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. No wonder, you know, the apostle says, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. For we are going to be like him. And it is the resurrected Christ that we are talking about. We are going to be like, immortalized. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Psalmist says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Amazing stuff here. Amen? Amazing stuff from God Almighty. Let me close by pointing out here so that this divine nature that we are promised to become partakers of begins now when God lines us up and given and gave us all that pertain to life and godliness and in pursuing this pathway we are told that the promises will allow us to become partakers of divine nature so this happens because of what as i read it i said to myself this thing was called the Great Escape. There was an escape from one of the most notorious prisons in America. And they said that nobody, it was what they call maximum security prison. Nobody couldn't escape from it, and a man escaped from it. 
Amen. And I'll know them to know who the man escaped. You know who the man walk. Where the man escaped. They cannot find him. But I think the greatest escape that any man is what this Bible says. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen? Amen. When God call us, he call us in order for us to escape a corruption that is in the world. Amen? Amen. Now, now, sometimes when we think of corruption, we think of things that rot. Things that are rotting and, and deteriorating and dying. That is the kind of corruption or things that are ugly and awful. But let me tell you something. Some of the greatest corruption is what you call corrosion. Hey. And corrosion is something where the things start just change form and become rusty. And over time, look okay. But with the passage of time, it just deteriorates. That is part of the problem in the world. That it has an attractiveness that we tend to go towards. And the longer we stay in it, is the more it corrodes us. Oh Lord, help me. Amen? We become rusty. We, became, we, we, we look like we're still strong and we're made of the same substance. But spiritually, corrosion is taking place. And so there is a corruption that in the world, that is in the world, that is subtle. It does not show its ugly side early. Amen? Amen? The ugly side is not seen. The beautiful, attractive side is shown first. And, and look at the principle in the Garden of Eden, how Satan comes and did not say to Eve that what God says about the fruit is that the fruit is rotten and what have you and so on and so on. She said, he said, listen, you shall not die. God knows that there is going to be something even more attractive for you. You're going to become as gods. You're going to be wise. You're going to know good and evil. You're going to know more than you know. Remember, I asked you at the very beginning when we started this sermon, what more do you need why you're not satisfied with the Lord Jesus. He has given you all that pertains to life and God. All, everything. Why are you discontented? Why are you dissatisfied? What are you going after? Why do you believe that you need something more in order to live godly? Why are you less than satisfied with what God has given. That's the part of the corrosion process. You are shown something that appears to be attractive and before you know it, you get hooked into it and it slowly destroys, damages and in the final end, come out to nothing. And so I close by making reference to this, that we might be made partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And so this world, no matter how attractive it is, how attractive it looks, what it holds out to us as promise. It is a world that we are called from because we cannot partake of the divine nature while we are partaking of the world. Amen? Come out of her. We are called by God. We are called and given great and precious promises. We are called and given all that pertain to life. Come out of her. Amen? Amen? 
Amen? Amen. That is why we are told that the world is enmity with God. God wants you to partake of divine nature. The world cannot offer divine nature. What the world offers is conflicting with and contradictory to divine nature. Amen? Amen? So we have escaped that. And if you escape something, nobody go back in it. Amen? That is why we are told that if we love the world, we make ourselves what? The enemy of God because God wants to give you divine nature. And why you don't want to let go of the world and then call you out of it? And that is why Satan is called what? The God of this world. Why is Satan called the God of this world? Satan has no hope or prospect of ever partaking of divine nature. Amen? Satan, so Satan going to dominate everything that is going to distract you and attract you from divine nature. Satan is going to try and trap you. And so Satan, being the God of this world, has devised all kinds of attractive ways of keeping you away from pursuing the path that leads to divine nature. Are you getting that? You're hearing what I'm saying? You with me? Amen. So Satan is the God of this world because his job is to cause you to get away from and not receive divine nature. Remember, divine nature is what allows us to live for ever. Amen? And so some of us may be saying, well, how are we going to manage? How are we going to make it? And I close with this scripture, Titus 2, verses 11 and 12. Titus 2, verses 11 and 12. You're wondering how we're going to make it? Hallelujah. The grace of God. The grace of God. Praise the name of the Lord. The grace of God. Not our knowledge. Not our education. Not the information we have. Not our position or our possession. The grace of God. And it is a grace that has what? Appeared to all men. God not partial. God not making a distinction. God is not making a separation in the availability of his grace. But not only has the grace appeared, but verse 12, what it says. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and what? World, the same thing Peter says, we have escaped from, amen? We have been escaped from ungodliness and worldly lust that we should what? Live how? Soberly. Come on church. Consciously. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we must be sober people and know that we have been called and given all that pertain to life and godliness. Settle yourself. Don't be tossed to and fro. By every wind of doctrine and teaching. Don't be dissatisfied, discontented, always going after something that you don't even know what it is when God has already given you all that pertains to life and godliness. That we should live soberly. Amen? That we should live how? Righteously. That we should live how? Godly. Where? So we have help. We have help. Hallelujah. The precious promises that we have been given comes with a dose of grace. A dose of grace that teaches us. So if you don't understand, appeal to the grace of God. And if you falter, appeal to the grace of God. For the grace of God teaches you and teaches me to what? Deny ungodliness and worldly loss so that we can live what? 
soberly. We can live righteously. And we can live. It can be done. You have everything. You already have it. You don't have to go look it nowhere. Amen? But I say I go look nobody to fix you up. Amen? You don't need nobody to fix you up. You have everything in Jesus. All that pertains to life and godliness. So, we have everything we need. All things are given by the grace of God. So let us be thankful, church. Let us be thankful, believers. Let us be thankful. Let us rejoice. Let us be grateful for the escape that we have from this corrupted world. Let us commit to living for God and serving him. We are promised to partake in God's divine nature. We are promised to share in the very essence of what and who God is. That is amazing. That is marvelous. That is great. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer is that you will not only know that you have been given all these things, but that you will apply, that you will activate, that you will live in accordance with the awareness that you have it. And finally, that we all, all of us who have listened to this word, all of us who have read this passage, all of us to whom the Spirit of God has spoken, may be partakers in the divine nature. God bless you in Jesus' name. Can you bless the Lord again, church? Can you bless the Lord again, church? Can you bless the Lord again, church? Are you feeling really a, a, a deep sense of rejoicing inside? Huh? Isn't it a good feeling to recognize that we are partakers of God's divine nature, church? Isn't it a wonderful position to be placed in church in the scheme of things? That Christ has given us all things. All things. All things, Jesus, that pertains to God the living. Jesus, thank you, Pastor. Pastor, thank you for such a word today. And may we, when we leave out of this place, brethren, step out in that confidence that look up your pure spirit and move away. Because we're not normal people at all. Halle hallelujah. Divine nature, God the nature. Jesus, receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. You in cyberspace. I hope and trust that you were focused and you received this Rima word in the name of Jesus. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God, church. Praise be to God, church. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. It's a privilege and an honor to have just sat and listened. And I tell you, brethren, these things don't just the normal because it's God has spoken. Jesus. God has spoken. Thanks again. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for making yourself available to be used as an instrument of God to talk to his people. Praise God. I, 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 let, me, let me move on. <laughs> something just bubbled up inside of me. Let me move on. Of course, we are very grateful, you know, to just be here. Just be here. Just be here to be partakers of this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful meal that has been served but of course we know time is going and we'll be closing so of course we'll be asking the praise team to come and help me sing this wonderful hymn hymn number 248 from the worshiping songbook standing on the promises of god hymn number 248 from the worshiping songbook and if you're here and you want prayer to be made on your behalf you could come to the altar as we end the singing of him pastor harley we're coming back to pray for those at the altar, for those who, of course, and, 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 and to, to close. And you in cyberspace, even if you can't get the word to us that you need prayer, just stretch out your hand in faith as Pastor makes a prayer of faith for you. We don't have to know the exact condition or the exact situation, but God knows and God answers prayer. Praise God. 
So congregation could, as, as I said before, could we sing, stand as we sing this wonderful hymn, hymn number 248, Standing on the Promises of God. Praise God. Wonderful and precious promises he has made through his divine power indeed. Praise God. Praise and worship. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises Standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing. special moment, oh, a very special moment, and it's, 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 a, it's an opportune time. If you are here today, even in this congregation, and you have not surrendered to Jesus Christ as yet, come to the altar. We want you to be partakers of God's godly nature, divine nature. Praise God. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. We want to know in your life that which the devil had messed up, you can have it restored. You can have it cleaned up. And the one who will do the cleaning is Jesus. He's here today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Don't take this moment lightly. It was God's will for you to have been here to hear that wonderful word come from his man's servant. The whole concept of God's divine nature. You can be partakers today of God's divine nature. If you only surrender to him and come to the altar, pour out your heart to him 
and and receive his divine nature. We'll be singing the last stanza again as you contemplate, as you think, as you ponder, as you make the right decision, standing on the promises. And Pastor Mali will come to pray for those at the altar and to close. You're in cyberspace as well. If you have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior, then you can form your own altar. Kneel where you are. Kneel and respond to the call. Praise God. Stand Standing on, on the, the promises, promises I cannot fall. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Amen. We bow in worship. We bow in adoration. We bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, eternal, immortal, invisible, only wise God, we bow in acknowledgement of your sovereignty. We bow in acknowledgement of our humanity and recognize how frail and feeble we are in the presence of your might and majesty. We thank you, God, that though our righteousness are as filthy rags before you, you have made it possible by the blood of Jesus Christ that we can be pardoned from all sin, cleansed from all unrighteousness, and therefore can come boldly before your throne and to make petition of you. God, we are thankful for our spared lives. We are grateful for the opportunity of being in your house and for this time of worship. We are in a world that seeks to bring us into conformity with it. But God, we thank you that your words declare that we should not conform to it, but rather we should be transformed. And we're thankful for the work of your Holy Spirit that renews the mind and helps us as we go on this journey. We thank you, mighty God, for your word, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit. And your Holy Spirit has brought your word home to us in a forceful way, O oh God. And we appreciate, we accept it, and deep in our hearts we are thankful. Hallelujah. 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 For God, we recognize that you're taking us closer home to your eternal kingdom. Amen. And we are grateful. So Lord, we pray today that you will help us to recognize and not only know it in our head and in our hearts, but to live it confidently and with assurance that you have given us all that pertains to life, hallelujah, and godliness, and that we will not be lied to anymore by the enemy and that the world will not be as attractive to us. Amen. And that we are not short of anything. We are not deficient in any way. We are not dissatisfied or unhappy with what you have given us because you have given us all. Hallelujah. That pertains to life and godliness. And so we pray that you'll teach us, O oh God, in this moment to be content. Hallelujah. And to bless your name and to glorify you. But more than that, O oh God, we are so grateful, excited, overwhelmed by your precious promises. Hallelujah. That you'll be a father to us, O oh God. Sometimes we are in need of help, divine help, O oh God. And it's good to know that you're a father. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, because you taught us that when we pray, we should say, Father. And so we thank you, hallelujah, that you're a loving father. Hallelujah. Re wonderful uh, present helpful heavenly father 
And we pray, God, that even as we have been told in your words, as Jesus told his disciples, and we are followers, hallelujah, that he will come again and receive his children unto himself, receive his disciples unto himself. May we, O oh God, be among those that are received, hallelujah, and partake of his presence wherever he is. Lord, as we bring to a close the service, we bring to you our needs. We have stepped forward to the altar. We have bowed our heads in acknowledgement that we have need of you. And so I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, where there's need for salvation, that you'll minister it for the glory of your name. Where there's need, O oh God, for awareness and anointing by your spirit so that we can see, we can understand better what is it you have given us. May your anointing flow now in the name of Jesus Christ. Where there is deliverance that is necessary because Satan has bound us and have blinded us, the God of this world, to the glorious, wondrous gospel promises. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From all infirmity. Deliver. Hallelujah. From all captivity. Hallelujah. And bring us into victory in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray God for triumph over the works of the flesh. Mighty God. For they sometimes hold us hostage. But we pray, mighty God, that you will release us from that hostage condition. And bring us into freedom and liberty. We ask you, mighty God, that you will minister deliverance to all those that are bound by demonic forces, by dark powers, O oh God. We pray for release in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I ask you now, God, that the needs that are at the altar, those who have special cases of illness, those whose children, they need to be saved for their eternal kingdom. Those, O oh God, who have backslidden. Those, O oh God, who have wandered away. I pray that like the good shepherd you are, the loving father, you will let them know by the power of your spirit that you have not abandoned them. That, O oh God, there is mercy with you. There is forgiveness with you. There's restoration with you. And so I pray, God, that you'll bring them back into relationship with you for the honor and the glory of your name. Remember those online, oh God, Facebook and, and YouTube, oh God, and their needs, they are in your presence. And we pray over them, their condition, their lives too, that Lord, they may also yield completely to you. Father, it is our prayer as we bring this service to a close that you'll help us, oh God, to recognize the exceeding great and precious promises, more so the opportunity, the privilege that we have to partake of divine nature. May we then be motivated. May we then persevere faithfully to the end, O oh God. And finally, may we enter into your eternal kingdom where through countless ages of eternity we will live for you, live with you forever and ever. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. And if you agree and believe, say, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, it's the ending of our day's worship here today. Say it with some amount of regret. <laughs> but we understand that, you know, we have to go. Um, just to remind you, brethren, and you're in cyberspace, that, that effort being made through the Wheel of Dean Church um, started last evening, prayer for the nations. I hope that you were able to have joined and to have, um, you know, really gleaned something great from it. Continues today, this, uh, this evening. So we invite you to join in this evening again and help us to pray. Pray for the nations as, of course, our leaders internationally and locally have come together in this massive effort to pray because we know when we pray, hallelujah, when we pray with faith believing, look out, <laughs> look out, great things are expected to happen. 
And if nothing happens, God, to God be the glory does the same. Because it is his decision. And his decision is the best decision. Do you agree, do you agree with that, church? Amen. So whatever he decides, we will work with it. But we're going to pray. Praise God. Praise God. So, of course, that said, it was a pleasure serving you, Deacon Walker, here. Pastor Harley brought forth the word. So could you stand, please, as we stand for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now and forever. God bless. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're in cyberspace. Thanks for joining. And we punch trust it was a blessing to you. Join us again next week. Same time. Right here. Same um, platforms. YouTube and Facebook. God bless. Praise and worship. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think your life, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you are pleased and that I am never alone. You're a good, good father, that's who you are. That's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Yes, you are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you're perfect. Cause you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you're perfect. God, you are perfect. All of the ways you are perfect in all of your ways, you're perfect, you are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by. So I am, it's so I am, it's so I am, you're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good Good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect in all of Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. You are perfect.